Welcome to NICU 101, Understanding and Participating in Your Baby's Development in the NICU and Beyond. My name is Sue Wisson and I am the Senior NICU Therapist here at St. Barnabas Medical Center. Parenting a baby in the NICU is a challenging task. This presentation is designed to help you understand and participate in your baby's sensory and motor development during the NICU stay and in the transition to home. Becoming familiar and comfortable in caring for your baby will reduce your anxiety and better prepare you to help your baby grow and develop. Knowing how to help your baby at various stages will allow you to feel more calm and confident during what is a stressful time. Since your baby was born early, they will have two different ages. Chronological age is based on the day they were born. Corrected age is based on the day they were expected to be born. In this example, let's say your baby was born at 28 weeks which is 12 weeks or 84 days early. The date is March 18th, 2019, and your baby's birth date was November 18th, 2018. Your baby would be chronologically four months old and corrected to five weeks or one and a quarter months old. When looking at your baby's growth and development, use their corrected age. In this example, the baby should only be expected to do what a one month old can do. We typically correct a premature baby's age until they are two years old. There are many apps and websites available to help you calculate your baby's corrected age. A physical or occupational therapy evaluation may be ordered by your physician for your baby. NICU therapists are specifically trained to work with premature babies. We look at your baby's corrected age skills including how your baby takes in information with their five senses and from the world around them as well as how they move in different positions. Along with nursing, NICU therapists will work with your family to help you understand your baby's body language and how to promote their development. Together, we will focus on teaching you how to read your baby's cues and position your baby as they grow. With this knowledge, you will be more comfortable to partner in the care of your baby. In order to understand your baby, it is important to understand that there are many differences in the development of the full-term baby versus the premature baby. The full-term infant has spent up to 40 weeks in the womb, allowing for the development of muscles and bones. Full-term infants maintain their arms and legs bent with elbows and knees tucked in toward the middle of their body. The hands are positioned close to the baby's face. This is called physiological flexion. The baby moves freely within the small space of the womb and with the help of the amniotic fluid and without gravity impeding. The premature baby does not develop that physiological flexion seen in the full-term baby. They have underdeveloped muscles and do not have the benefit of moving in the amniotic fluid without gravity. Premature babies are typically in a frog-like posture with W positioning of their arms and M positioning of their legs. When babies are born premature, they lack the strength to position themselves in that tucked posture and move against gravity. Special positioning devices or towel rolls may be used to help them achieve and maintain that physiological flexed position and mimic the environment of the womb. The ultimate positioning goal is to have the premature baby positioned as they would be if they were in the womb. Initially, your baby may not tolerate being placed in a tucked position. This may take time to achieve depending on the medical status and developmental age of your baby. We, along with nursing, will work with you and your baby to achieve that goal. Positioning and understanding how to touch, provide movement, and introduce sound are essential to promote the progression of skills in all newborns, especially in premature infants. There are multiple ways that you can be involved in getting to know what is best for your baby. Your interaction with your baby will depend on how comfortable they are with touch, movement, and being held by you. This level of comfort may change from day to day depending on the baby's age and how they feel. When your baby has the proper support from you, you can help your baby advance their skills. Babies who are born under 1500 grams and those who have difficulty maintaining a tucked position may be placed on positioning devices. These devices may include Z-Flow, which is a fluidized full body pillow, towel rolls, or swaddlers. The NICU therapist, along with your baby's nurse, will determine the proper device for your baby and monitor its use. All NICU babies are repositioned by nursing and or therapists to encourage developmentally appropriate movement and skills in all positions. Your baby will actually show you when they are ready to interact with you or when they need a break. 
Your baby is ready to interact with you when they are calm and quiet with their hands to their mouth or when their hands are close to their face in a flexed position and they are alert with good eye contact. They should also be breathing evenly and have a healthy color. These signs help you to get to know each other in so many ways. Interacting with your newborn also helps to improve bonding and increase their attention. Your baby communicates in many ways and will have cues that tell you that they are overstimulated. Many things may lead to overstimulation, including the hustle and bustle of the NICU. Prematurity itself may lead to overstimulation as the baby's system is not able to handle the stress, noise, or frequent touch required for care. Bright light and direct light can cause your baby to become irritated. Strong smells such as perfume may aggravate your baby and disrupt them from being calm. Trying to interact with your baby when they are stressed may lead to disorganization of the baby, including irritability, crying, and difficulty calming. The behaviors to be aware of include frowning and grimacing, looking away from you with splayed fingers and outstretched hands, crying, and yawning. Additional signs of overstimulation include a change in heart rate, breathing pattern, tremors, or startling, as well as decreased oxygenation. Minimizing the effects and recognizing when your baby needs a little break will help your baby grow and thrive. When you see signs of discomfort and stress in your baby, there are ways to help them become calm and comfortable. The key is to watch your baby's reactions, know the signs to look for, and react with a calming approach. Reacting sooner than later prevents your baby from becoming completely overstimulated. Use a soft voice. Your touch should be gentle yet firm. For example, position the baby in a tucked posture and use hand hugging as an effective strategy to organize and soothe your baby. To hand hug, place one cupped hand around your baby's head and the other around your baby's feet. Your baby will also be comforted by holding onto your finger. If your baby is irritable, slow rocking or skin to skin contact via kangaroo care may help your baby to settle and sleep. Sucking is a normal calming behavior for all infants and using their hands or a pacifier is encouraged. Your baby's tolerance to touch in the NICU may vary according to their gestational age as well as their medical stability. When touching your baby, provide a firm but gentle touch. Stroking or lightly rubbing your baby can be irritating. Touch can calm your baby and help you to bond with your baby. Your baby's favorite sound will be your voice. Talk or sing frequently to your baby in a quiet voice when they are in a calm, relaxed state. You may play soft music or sounds. Sound can help your baby calm and sleep better. You can also bond with your baby using the sense of smell. Take a cloth and place it against your skin for a while to absorb your scent. Leave the cloth with your baby so they may feel connected with you even when you cannot be at the bedside. Remember to watch for the signs of overstimulation and modify your input based on your baby's communication with you. Your baby will be unable to focus on you initially. Visual focus usually develops at approximately 40 weeks corrected age. Your baby's favorite thing to look at will be your face. When awake and looking at you, your baby will be strengthening their eye muscles. Your baby will focus first and then eventually move their eyes to start to follow your movements. Remember to always follow their signs and cues to know if they are ready to interact or need a rest. Sleep is an essential part of brain development and important in the NICU and at home. Getting your baby to sleep and safeguarding sleep will help your baby be more calm and ready to interact with you during waking hours. It will also help them grow and improve development. You can encourage sleep in various ways. Positioning your baby with their arms and legs towards the middle of their body will allow them to feel secure. You may choose to swaddle your baby to allow them to maintain a tucked position. You may also choose to use kangaroo care with your baby to comfort them and promote sleep. Another way to encourage sleep is by positioning them so that they can suck on their hands or give them a pacifier. The day when your baby will transition from the NICU to home is a happy time, but also requires some preparation. We encourage you to attend the discharge class taught by nursing to ease the transition. If your baby received physical and occupational therapy in the NICU, we will meet with you and provide you with information to facilitate this transition for you and your baby. There is a difference in safe sleeping in the NICU versus the home environment. 
It is safe for your baby to sleep on their tummy in the NICU since they are closely supervised and monitored for breathing and heart rate. Gradually, your baby will have to adjust to sleeping on their back before going home. Since 1992, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends placing babies to sleep on their back to protect against SIDS, which is Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. The recommendation includes placing your baby on their back on a firm surface in a crib or bassinet with a tight-fitting sheet, as well as to avoid the use of soft bedding, bumpers, and toys in the crib. The American Academy of Pediatrics Back to Sleep Tummy to Play campaign reminds parents to provide babies with supervised tummy time daily to encourage growth and development. To soothe your baby at home, you may find swaddling your baby in either a commercial swaddling device or a receiving blanket, holding your baby in your arms on their left side, rocking your baby, turning on calming music or sounds, or bathing your baby helpful. Swaddling can be a great way to calm and organize your baby. Not all babies like to be swaddled and there are different variations you can try. We encourage you to work with nursing or the NICU therapist before your baby is discharged from the NICU on swaddling. Working together with nursing or the NICU therapist, you can learn the various methods of swaddling and how to identify your baby's swaddling preference before going home. Swaddling should be done with a thin receiving blanket or commercially available swaddling device. For safe swaddling, your baby should be placed on their back in a loose swaddle with their hips and knees bent and slightly turned outward. You should stop swaddling your baby when they are two months corrected age or when the baby attempts to roll, whichever happens first. If you choose to swaddle your baby for sleep, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends you closely monitor your baby so that they do not roll over or overheat in the swaddle. Tummy time helps to strengthen your baby's neck and chest muscles. Tummy time should be performed daily as part of your routine while your baby is awake and alert. You must supervise your baby for safety at all times when performing tummy time. Tummy time will help prevent your baby's head from flattening, improve your baby's motor skills, and build strength for sitting up, rolling over, crawling, and walking. Try short tummy time sessions after a diaper change or after your baby wakes up from a nap. Doing tummy time laying down on your chest will encourage your baby to lift their head to see your face. You can also start tummy time by holding your baby at your shoulder. You may use a boppy pillow or towel roll under their chest to help your baby lift their head and interact with their surroundings. Position your face or a mirror in front of your baby to encourage head lifting. You may choose to use certain types of baby equipment that can promote your baby's development. A boppy pillow can assist with tummy time by taking some pressure off of the baby's chest and forearms when lying on their tummy. Your baby may be able to tolerate tummy time for longer using this device. Having your baby see the world around them and being able to move their body and explore is an important part of learning. Use bright colored contrasting toys initially for your baby to focus on and track. Your baby may enjoy rhythmical rocking of a swing. They will be encouraged to swipe and reach for toys on a play mat. Devices such as walkers, exercisers, and jelly jumpers are not recommended. When they spend extended time periods in these devices, it may lead to delay in motor skills. Your baby learns through experience, therefore moving around on their own and on the floor is very important. The American Academy of Pediatrics does not promote the use of walkers due to the possibility of delayed developmental skills and the risk of injuries. High Risk Infant Follow-Up Clinic is a monitoring program for discharged NICU babies who were born at less than 32 weeks and or had a birth weight of less than 1,500 grams. Your baby's general health, height, and weight will be assessed by the nurse and the neonatologist at each visit. Gross and fine motor skills will be screened by a physical or occupational therapist and you will receive activities to work on with your baby at home based on your baby's corrected age skills. The first visit is usually scheduled around two months corrected age. Typically, your baby will be seen three times by the physical or occupational therapist in their first year. Around 18 months corrected, the baby will be evaluated by a developmental psychologist for language and cognitive skills. If the need arises, your baby will be referred for additional services such as early intervention, outpatient physical or occupational therapy, outpatient feeding therapy, or for a consultation with a medical specialist. 
Not all babies seen in the clinic require these additional services. It is important to remember that all babies develop differently, although milestones are expected to be achieved by certain ages. You can contact the Early Intervention Program if you are concerned that your baby may have a developmental delay at any time. The Early Intervention Program is available for infants from birth to age 3. This program is parent-driven and does not require a medical referral. The evaluation is free and is done in your home. The Early Intervention Program will use your baby's chronological age when evaluating their skills and not their corrected age. If your baby is found to have a developmental delay, treatment in your home is offered on a sliding fee scale. There are so many things to think about with your newborn baby. The Physical and Occupational Therapy Department is here to help with questions you may have regarding your baby's motor skill development, positioning, or specific activities to help them grow and thrive. Please feel free to contact our department with any questions or concerns you may have. And most of all, enjoy your new baby. At the end of this video, please open the folder NICU 101 PT and OT handouts. There are several resources which you can view, download, and print.